Hey guys, welcome back to electronicsinnovation.com. Just now got this parcel delivered from pcpware.com. In this video, we are going to see what does this parcel contains. We are going to unbox it and then we will try to make a project out of it. So by the way, this whole project is sponsored by pcpware.com by sending these PCBs. But more on them later in the episode. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive into the episode. Let's quickly open the package. First things first, let's unbox our PCB. As you can see here, the packaging is secure and well protected, ensuring that our PCB arrives in pristine condition. Taking the first look at the bare PCB, I was immediately struck by its professional appearance and tactile quality. Now examining the cell screen, soldering mask and connective pads on the bare PCB reveals a level of quality that truly speaks to the expertise of our manufacturer. The precision in the cell screen, the even application of the soldering mask and the integrity of the conductive pads are commendable. Let me take this moment and thank PCBWay.com for supporting Macro like me around the globe. PCBWay.com is not only a PCB manufacturing enterprise but also offers services such as prototype PCB assembly for just $30 for up to 20 pieces, which includes both PCBA and component sourcing. If you have a similar requirement, make sure to visit the website for more details using the link provided in the description below this video. Before moving into the assembly part, let's quickly rewind. This part of the PCB is responsible for converting 12 volts to 5 volts to power up the node MCU and the other sensors. We also have an additional input power option which is a lithium ion battery to power the ESP8266 module. To recharge the lithium ion battery, we have a TP4056 single cell BMS located on the bottom side of the PCB. This also serves as a another input option to power directly from the USB if the battery is not connected. As for this episode, we are not going to populate these power supply options. Rather, we will concentrate on the integration of the main controller, BME680 sensor, OLED display and PM sensor. Then we will verify the functionality. Now it's time to start placing the jumper pins on their position. To prepare for assembly, we are applying masking tape to protect these jumpers from falling once we flip the PCB for soldering. With the masking tape in place, it's time for magic. Abracadabra, abracadabra. Now let's remove the masking tape. With the magic of soldering, all the jumpers are perfectly attached to the PCB. Now let's place the real components in their respective positions in the desired directions. ESP8266. BME680, OLED display and PM sensor. Oh, where can we place it? There is no place for this on the PCB. Mm, did we forget to allow out space for this on the PCB? Mm, definitely not. The plan is to assemble the sensor at the bottom of the PCB in a sandwich configuration. How can we do that? With the help of these spaces. And ultimately, here we have our finally assembled hardware ready for action. The AirSense device has been ingeniously designed and assembled in a sandwich layout, optimizing the space while maintaining the functionality. This configuration allows for efficient use of available space a crucial consideration in many applications. Now let's move on to the programming the AirSense project. 
Here is the code for AirSense project. It is essentially the same as the one we discussed in the indoor air quality monitoring system. I have taken that code and added IoT capabilities to it. I will guide you through the modification required to add IoT capabilities from your side if you consider using the same code for your project. First and foremost, to connect our AirSense to UbiDots, we need to install a specific library. You can download this library from GitHub, extract it and add it to the Arduino library folder. The next important thing is to obtain the UbiDots token. You can get this token from the UbiDots platform. Search for UbiDots on the Google and click on the STEM version of it. The STEM version is the free version. Others are commercial. You have to pay for it. Quickly create a STEM account using either of these two options on the home page. Fill in the details and activate the account. Once the account is activated, click on the profile icon and go to the API credentials. Then copy the default token as shown here. Come back to Arduino IDE and paste the token. After that, provide the SSID and password of the available Wi-Fi network. These are the modifications required from your site to connect the ESP8266 module to the UbiDots. For the security reasons, I am not displaying my UbiDots token, SSID and password here, but you have to enter them. Now connect the ESP8266 to the computer using micro big cable. Go to tools and select the Node MCU 1.0 ESP12 module as shown here. Then in the same tools menu, select the right port. With everything set up, we can proceed to upload. But before that, let me give you a glimpse of what to expect. On the UbiDots device page, we have a two demo devices. These are automatically created by UbiDots. The moment we upload the code, the ESP8266 will connect to the Wi-Fi and communicate with UbiDots. Our device will then be registered and we can see the data being pushed to our AirSense. Okay, now let's go back to the Arduino IDE and click on Upload. During this process, the Arduino IDE compiles the sketch into machine code in .bin format, also called as bin format. Then the same file will be transferred to the ESP8266 over the UART using esptool.py. Once the code is uploaded to ESP8266, open the serial monitor to witness the Wi-Fi connection process. As you can see here, the ESP8266 successfully connected to the Wi-Fi and got an IP allocated. Then it is trying to establish a connection with the UbiDots over MQTT protocol. Now it's connected and started publishing the data such as PM2.5 and PM10, temperature and humidity gas resistance and estimated CO2, pressure and altitude. Then it is pushing the updated PM values again and the loop continues. Now let's visit the UbiDot platform and refresh it to see the updated devices. We can see the AirSense device which has been created recently and the last activity was just a few seconds ago. To see the published data, click on the device name. Here, we can see the all data variables that are being published. We can access the historical data of a particular variable by clicking on it. We can view the data in a graph format or in the table format. We can visualize this data in the dashboard section. In the dashboard section, we already have a demo dashboard demonstrating UbiDots visualization capabilities. So, to create our own dashboard, first we need to delete the demo dashboard. Then, let's proceed to create a dashboard. My dashboard name will be AirSense and I will keep the rest of the settings default and click on save. The new dashboard has been created and we need to start visualizing the variables using widgets. Click here to add a new widget. Select the widget type. I am selecting the thermometer to visualize the temperature. 
Similarly, we can use the other widgets based on the variable data type. Then click on add variable. Select the device and then select the variable. Finally, click on save. A new thermometer widget has been successfully added to the dashboard where the data will be updated on the go. You can see the live data every time the new data packet has been pushed to the UB dots. Similarly, let's add widgets for other variables. So that's all. We have successfully added the widgets to visualize temperature, humidity, PM 2.5, PM 10, gas resistance, estimated CO2, pressure, and altitude. Visualizing this data in real time provides invaluable insights into environmental conditions, enabling us to monitor air quality levels with precision. Moreover, the live data updates empower us to make informed decisions promptly, whether it's adjusting ventilation systems, implementing air purification measures, or simply staying informed about the surrounding air quality dynamics. And that's a wrap. Throughout this whole video, we have unboxed and assembled our AdSense project and connected it to UbiDots. We are now able to monitor environmental data points in real time. And we are also having a database for it where we can access later. Stay tuned to Electronics Innovation for more interesting projects and happy experimenting. Bye-bye.